Now, let me tell you a secret. When I try to sit down with my family in a really formal way and say, we're going to study scripture, I'm open up the Bible, and we're going to read it together. Uh, 80% of the time, my two children go, no, I don't want to do it. I, no, I do it, Mom. Why do we have to do this? Why are you a pastor? Why do we have to care about this so much? This is what they do. It, so I just don't want you to think at any moment that I have these sweet little angels that are eating out of my hand saying, yes, Mother, please read us more scripture. May we memorize more, please. May I have another? No, they're not doing that. And so as a parent in this season of my life, I find myself having to be much more covert than that. And so I have to be much more creative and sneaky about how to sort of slide these things into our conversation and into our daily lives. And so I do things like when they're strapped in the car and they can't go anywhere else, I begin to ask theological questions that I myself am dealing with. Now, never mind that they're 11 and 8. I talk to them about it anyways, and I listen for what it is that they have to say about it. I try to create toasts as prayers. Hey, guys, it's dinner time. Instead of saying a prayer, we're gonna do, I don't even tell them instead of saying a prayer. I just say, let's do toasts. May God bless us. May God come into our family. What is it that you wish for? What is it that you hope for? Let's do a toast. And in that, I'm teaching them to pray. We do highs and lows at the dinner table or at bedtime in order to glean prayer requests, and then we pray about those things. I ask questions of how they saw different kingdom values play out in their lives. I don't tell them their kingdom values at this point. I just say, hey, when did you see generosity happen? When were you kind to somebody else? When did you see somebody else be compassionate to you? Where in this movie that we're watching right now do you see there being a problem with justice? How might God want to change that? I want to see them to see those values in their everyday life. Again, when they're strapped into the car, we listen to worship music, or I tell them that I have to listen to a podcast for work that is actually a sermon, and that gets some questions going. I point out places in nature or in movies or TV shows where I see themes of a redemption and restoration, and I show them it, and I point it out, and they roll their eyes at me, and they're like, oh, can't we just go for a walk? And I'm like, oh, it's all around us. And almost every night as I leave their room, I quote the same Old Testament Bible verse that I have since they were babies. In fact, they didn't even know that it was an Old Testament Bible verse. They were watching a movie the other day where it had an ancient Jewish character in it who quoted this same scripture verse. And they turned to me with their eyes ablaze and said, Mom! Mom! That's what you always say! They stole that from you! You gotta get some money! They don't know. Now, here's my confession. I do this much better with my own kids than I do with the few adults that are in my circle. I'm still trying to figure out how to make that happen without it being weird or forced. I try to engage in everyday conversation as it comes up. But I want you to know that whether you are doing your few with a group of kids or a group of adults, they're listening and they're paying attention to what you are saying and also what you're not saying. 